Hello again, Gary Stearman with another edition of Prophecy in the News. Today, uh, with sad news, some of you may not know, although I'm sure many of you do know, that uh, our founder and director, J.R. Church, passed away on March the 22nd of this year. Passed away peacefully in his home, and uh, he has gone on to eternal glory. And by the way, that was one of his favorite Bible themes, and we'll be talking about that today. Well, I'm in studio today with Bob Ulrich, and uh, many of you have never met Bob in person. Uh, you certainly haven't been watching him on TV over the years, but he's been around for, uh, I guess, about 17 years. Am I correct in that? Heading on 18. Not okay. Quite, not quite as long as you, but I've been here for quite a long time. Well, I've been here for 24 years and uh, going on 25, and we are both uh, carrying on the work that JR started. We're going to be talking today, doing a little reminiscing about J.R.'s life, his legacy, uh, his goals, and his vision for Prophecy in the News, and, and how we would like to continue uh, J.R.'s plans. Because, you know, J.R. was a visionary man, Bob, and, and I think uh, when you first came here years ago, you know, you drove up, here was Prophecy in the News, and you wondered, what am I getting myself into here? And over the years, you have picked up, I think, on this vision. Well, I think uh, you and I probably know Jr. as well as <coughs> most people in this world, you know, ever could. Yeah. Uh, we've worked intimately with him for a long, long time. Uh, he was a, a fascinating personality, uh, bigger than life in a lot of ways. Uh, he did have a tremendous vision for the future. He loved the study of Bible prophecy like, like no one I've ever met before. Uh, it consumed his whole life. It was his passion. As a matter of fact, not only... Uh, did he study Bible prophecy? As a matter of fact, and I have made the statement to many people, they ask me about J.R., and the distinctive, from my perspective, the distinctive of J.R. was that he knew the Bible. I have never studied the Bible with another human being who knew more about the Bible than J.R. Church. You could bring up a subject and boom, he'd, he would fire back three verses at you. He really understood the Bible. And one of his favorite passages is in Romans chapter 8. And it's sort of the theme of today's uh, uh, broadcast. Uh, Romans 8, 29, For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. And as J.R. put it, we're called unto eternal glory. And uh, I think he really took that to heart, Bob. Well, he did when he was a young pastor in uh, Lubbock, Texas, at the uh, Western Hills Baptist Church. He actually preached this message, called unto eternal glory. Mm -hmm. And he remarked to me here a few months ago that it was his favorite sermon. Wow. And he hunted high and low for that original message. In fact, we're still hunting for it here uh, in the studios and, and the warehouse here. And one day we will find it. <clears throat> but in the meantime, we actually did a television program. And ironically, it was one of the very last programs that he did called Unto Eternal Glory. And uh, we've kind of memorialized that uh, in a DVD of that last program that we have here at the ministry. It was uh, in December of last year uh, that J.R. and I sat in this very studio, and, and he uh, developed this, this thought, uh, this subject called unto eternal glory. And, and, and you know, as, as, the, as the saying goes, there wasn't a dry eye in the house when he finished. It was an impassioned, heartfelt uh, expression from J.R., that, that the likes of which I've never seen before. And, and that was a very, very memorable program, Bob. Well, it was really something to watch. In fact, here's a copy of the DVD uh, that we have recorded. And uh, this is one of JR's last messages, and one he really wanted everybody to have. He really had uh, just tremendous interest in getting this material and subject out mm -hmm. there, uh, something that got him really excited. Absolutely. And by the way, we want to make this available to you. Uh, we are we're currently, Bob and I, working on a... Uh, J.R. Church memorial issue of the magazine Prophecy in the News. And we've been going back over some of his articles. 
we've been uh, reminiscing, uh, kind of checking our own memory banks to see what we can recall from, you know, 20, 25 years ago, uh, what JR was doing, what made Prophecy in the News so special. And, you know, it's been kind of interesting to look back at all the groundbreaking things that JR has done. Well, I kind of <coughs> kind of compare it to um, to a parent looking back on their uh, children's lives, you know, 20 years later, 30 years later, seeing all these wonderful pictures in this big, huge box and collection. Uh, as we've started to go through these old magazines, in fact, it's kind of funny. I watch you go through them mm -hmm. and see articles that you wrote 20 years ago, and, and you look at the articles and say, I'd forgotten I'd written this. <laughs> <laughs> this was an amazing study, and we're <laughs> yeah. kind of, you know, going back in the past and pulling up stuff, and J.R. left us just an absolute uh, treasure trove, 30 years of studies, materials, magazines, DVDs, videotapes, uh, television programs, uh, just more material than anybody could ever find. In fact, it's a funny story. A lot of you know that uh, Tom Horn's home burned down a few months ago, and Tom lost everything he owned. He lost his library. He lost his research material. And we replaced all of his prophecy in the news magazines. Uh -huh. In fact, we replaced a lot more than he had originally. And when he got this collection of 10 or 12 years of magazines and started to go through it, he just said, Bob, I've never seen anything like this. Uh, J.R. and Gary, they're like a throwback to people in the 1800s who just wrote extensively on so many subjects. And I'd have to agree. Well, there is a uniqueness about prophecy in the news. There are a lot of uh, prophecy ministries, Bob, and I say, Lord, bless them all. You know, I love to see people writing and studying about Bible prophecy, and, and, the, and the Lord gives different visions to, to all of us who are working in, in these subject areas. But when J.R. and I got together, I have to say that it was, uh, <clears throat> it was sort of two people bouncing off of each other, if you will. We didn't always agree on everything. Sometimes we would argue. Well, it wasn't, I hate to tell you this, but it wasn't just two people bouncing ideas off each other. The Holy Spirit was in the room. And it was amazing yeah. to watch, uh, amazing to see, because a lot of times you would come out with to the set completely unscripted, unrehearsed, uh, just on the fly, That's through right. to the pants theology. And you would discover things live on the set that you hadn't even talked about. And I always found that kind of interesting. And interesting. after the broadcast, we would say, this is amazing. We just, <laughs> something has just popped up that we didn't really see before, and we always attributed that to the leading of the Holy Spirit. And by the way, we still do uh, here. I, I believe that being Spirit-led is first and foremost uh, the central feature of uh, prophetic Bible study. You know, I'm, I'm looking here, when we did the uh, memorial issue, and by the way, that, that has not uh, been uh, put in print yet as as we speak we're putting the final touches on the uh, memorial issue of prophecy in the news but we look back for JR's uniqueness if you will and I'm looking at some notes here about an article that JR uh, wrote and it was in the November 1996 prophecy in the news it's called Superman Mary's Lois Lane now Let's be honest, you wouldn't expect to find that kind of an article in a prophecy magazine, right? Superman marries Lois Lane. What in the world is that doing in a magazine? Well, unless J.R. Church wrote it. He, <laughs> he had a flair for the spectacular, for the uh, bizarre, for things and headlines that really grabbed people's attention. And what he did uh, is an, actually a, an amazing study on how Superman uh, is a world copy of the real Superman, the Lord Jesus Christ. And Lois Lane becomes a kind of a bride. And so he, he did a study on the prophetic aspects of the Bride of Christ and showed how uh, the Superman series was sort of a counterfeit of Christ. And he went into some rather deep scriptural study, including some of the letters of the Hebrew alphabet. Because believe it or not, uh, Superman's dad has a Hebrew name, mm -hmm. Jor-El. And, and so you have to ask yourself, what is Superman's dad doing with a Hebrew name? And, of course, J.R. Uh, picked that up, and he ran with it and made a, an amazing article on Bible prophecy. Well, if you want to read all about that and the whole story, which is fascinating, you'll have to get a copy of that May Memorial magazine. Uh, we're printing a tremendous amount of extra issues because we know there are going to be a lot of people that are going to call and want to get that last issue with some of our insights into J.R., 
But you know, Jr. as you like to say, loved to break new ground. Oh, yeah. Uh, he, uh, he was not interested in standing still. He was just constantly perusing the scriptures, looking for new spectacular studies. In fact, we, we talked about this and actually laughed about it here recently. Uh, one of his favorite sayings was, Gary, this study has escaped the interest of theologians for centuries. And a lot of times it escaped yeah. the theologians forever. These were things that literally yeah. no one had ever uncovered in the scripture. And he delighted in finding something new. In fact, if he could find something new every day, he wanted to do that. Uh, he was not interested in something that he had already done. Once it was done, it was behind. He was always moving forward, and he and I both have that same idea that you really should look for something new uh, because the old, well, the old is the old. It's mm -hmm. gone, and we're looking forward. We're moving toward <coughs> our meeting with the Lord Jesus mm -hmm. in the air, and i got to tell you, J.R. hoped to make that day. He didn't make it, but uh, I'm sure that uh, he'll be among the first when the Lord comes to uh, kind of be right down in the, thr the heavenly throng and we'll all be rejoined uh, at that time. And that's going to be a great day. That was a very real thought to J.R. It was a very real idea. Equally real was the idea of being called unto eternal glory. And I am quite sure that he's there now. Again, I, I want to just mention that we're going to make the JR's last message to his followers uh, available to anyone who wants it. it it's, a, it, it's a DVD of, of JR's really, uh, I think, a special message. We've called it a gift to those who have followed him over the years. And if, you, if you'd like a copy of this, we'll make it available to you for a gift of any amount, and uh, it'll be yours. And I, I'm sure you'll want to see it again and again because it expresses not just JR's intellect, not just his goals and ideas, but also his emotions. Uh, the emotions come through on, on that DVD, Bob. Gary, I watched that at about 1.30 in the morning one night and I uh, put it in my laptop and sat down and started to watch it and I hadn't seen the program live before. And as I started to watch it, I started you know, to get emotional myself because uh, I think J.R. knew that his time was short and he was delivering this sermon like he did in such a fiery way so many times before. In fact, we wa I watched him on the set, and even though he was sick and in the late stages of cancer, uh, he was sharp as a tack. In fact, I'm not sure I've ever seen him clearer or more succinct on a program. Mm -hmm. I mean, scripture after scripture after scripture, uh, right off the top of his head. And it, honestly, it was a little intimidating to watch because I sat there and thought to myself, he has all this in memory in his memory banks. I mean, even though yeah. he's sick, this <clears throat> this is all right at the forefront right. of his thinking. I think it was a very special moment because, really, that was uh, he was at, at his maximum clarity at that point in time, and I had the sense, even as we were doing it, that it was really his last message to his to his people. And I, I think it, the Lord gave him that clarity. I, I think do, he I really do too. wanted this message really powerfully delivered about our hope for the future. And what does the scripture say? We don't sorrow like others who have no hope. Right. Uh, what is that hope? Oh, it's the blessed hope, of course, the return of the Lord Jesus Christ for his body, the church. You know, it's fascinating. Going back, uh, before I, I, I came to Prophecy in the News, I had heard about J.R. Church. I'd heard him on the radio occasionally. Uh, he had a television broadcast. But one day I heard him being interviewed on a local Christian radio station, and he was talking about uh, prophecies in the Psalms or something like that. <laughs> that caught my ear. And uh, he mentioned on that radio broadcast that he was going to be putting on a meeting. Well, uh, I thought, you know, we ought to go see that. So I talked to my wife. We uh, arranged to go to that meeting. And by the way, at that meeting, he was talking about his concept, presenting his concept of hidden prophecies in the Psalms, and he had the, the marvelous seven-screen panoramic projectors at that presentation. And when my wife Doris and I came out of there, we were bowled over. We just thought, there really is something to this. We talked about it all the way home. And uh, after we got home, I dug into my Bible, and I began to look at this concept, and I found example after example after example in the Hebrew language that validated what J.R. Was, was talking about. So I came back and talked to J.R. I came right down here to the offices of Prophecy in the News, 
knocked on the door and said, JR, I've got to show you something that I've discovered since that meeting the other night. And we bent over his desk and we compared notes. And first thing you know, he said, you know, you got something there. Is it okay if I put that in the book? And he did. And we met again and again and again. And after several meetings, lo and behold, I found, found myself coming to work here. And that's the way it all started. <laughs> that's the way it happened. Yeah. Well, you know, J.R. wasn't just a pastor. Uh, he wasn't just a theologian. Uh, <coughs> he was an entertainer. Uh, he was made oh, yeah. for the big stage. Uh, when he got up behind that pulpit, he was a totally different personality. Unless you've actually seen J.R. Church yeah. preach live, you haven't seen J.R. Church. Uh, in fact, one time at a prophecy conference uh, after he had preached, my, uh, my son, who was probably, I'm guessing, maybe 11 or 12 at the time, uh, we all went out for some pancakes after the message and we're sitting in an IHOP and, and Brad uh, looked at J.R. and he looked at me and he said, Dad, they should make like a cartoon character, like a superhero out of J.R. Because he's not just a preacher, he's like a superhero. And J.R. has <coughs> got such a big kick yeah. out of that. We just laughed and laughed. And But you know what? He was bigger than life in a lot of ways, he, wasn't he? He was. He had a presence uh, at the lectern that was just magnificent. And, and by the way, he used it to full, to full extent, to the full extent, when he was putting on his uh, seven screen panoramic picture projections. He went to the Middle East. He went to, to uh, to Israel and he had a method of putting a camera on a tripod and shooting a panoramic series of slides sometimes two and a, two and a quarter by two and a quarter slides sometimes 35 millimeter and uh, he knew exactly the angle at which to move the camera between each shot so that when he got them all back assembled them put them in seven slide projectors seven uh, curving screens at the front of a hall you, lo and behold, you had this incredible panorama. You felt like you were in Israel. He, uh, he it was poured amazing. his life and soul into those presentations. Yeah. I mean, he would spend literally weeks, if not months, right. preparing these lectures and these messages. And I know that he enjoyed preaching. And uh, he yeah. enjoyed pe seeing people saved. In fact, we talked about him being bigger than life. Yeah. Um, believe it or not, even at his funeral, even in death, Several people raised their hand for salvation. Uh, it was just a wonderful salvation message preached. And even though it was a sad day for all of us, uh, when those hands went up and you actually realized that people are coming to know the Lord at his funeral, I mean, it was a beautiful thing. You know, he ended every prophecy in the news broadcast with an invitation to receive Christ. And, I mean, it was something that he felt compelled to do. And... and uh, J.R. often referred to himself as a soul winner, which is kind of a cliche phrase. You know, what does a soul winner really mean after all? Uh, but to him, it just simply meant you never miss an opportunity to witness to somebody. And uh, he uh, faithfully presented the gospel at the end of every television program. Well, serving Jesus was his life. I uh, had a yeah. chance to talk to his twin brother, Terry, uh, at the house after the funeral. And uh, Terry just said to me, J.R. was all about others. Uh, his yeah. whole life was dedicated to pleasing others and winning souls. And uh, it's just very true. He's, he was yeah. a complicated and interesting man uh, who was fascinating to know. I mean, I know, I can imagine how much you must, how much you must miss him yeah. uh, and the studies and the camaraderie. Well, it, having uh, that kind of a partner to bounce ideas off of, I mean, uh, someone who really knows scripture. You can present an idea, idea to them and say, what do you think of this? And they'll either say, uh, I hate the idea or I love it. If they say, I hate the idea, then you can argue about it. If they say, I love it, well, what do you love about it? And, and you know, iron sharpening iron is the way J.R. and I worked together for years and years. And I wanted to talk too about the magazine because when I first came here in 19... Uh, 87, we didn't have a magazine. We had a tabloid size newspaper. I forget how many pages were in the paper. Do you remember? Uh, uh, 32 pages, and uh, you know, it looked a little bit like the National Enquirer. Yeah, and it was our first attempt, and JR did all the type composition. He did the cut and paste and strip and, and did the, the layout for the, for the newspaper, which then became a magazine subsequently, and uh, computer. Uh, composition became available then, graphic arts by computer, and J.R. was really on the leading edge of that, and 
put together every magazine. And that magazine was his passion. It was. I mean, it was like a newborn baby to him every month. You know, when that magazine came out and he looked at it, the finished copy, the finished cover, uh, you could just sense a feeling of euphoria came over him. He was really proud of his work. It was a, J.R. was a visual person. Very few people know that about him. Uh, as much as he loved to read scripture, he thought in terms of pictures. The way to understand his mind is that he would see concepts like in the same way that I would see a, a landscape laid out before me. Uh, he would think in pictures, he would bring the pictures together, and then he would write about them or present them in the magazine in some way or another. And if you notice the, the cover pictures on issue after issue, the illustrations, J.R. did all of those. He was an extremely visually oriented guy. And that gave him, uh, I think, part of the vision that he had for Bible prophecy. Well, we, la we laugh about it, and we covered this on one of our daily news updates. Uh, but one time I remember distinctly J.R. <laughs> telling me <laughs> that he spent eight hours manicuring your beard. For a cover shot. For a cover, yeah, of the magazine. Every hair had to be perfect. Nothing could be out of place. And he went into Photoshop. And for most people, that'd be tedious and laborious. But for J.R., he loved doing that kind of work. That was what he was all about. Well, J.R. was a perfectionist. Uh, uh, that, That's an and, understatement. And when I say perfectionist, <laughs> he was a perfectionist. He, would, he was a detail-oriented, uh, not that he didn't think in, in large images, which he did, but he also thought in terms of tiny, tiny details, and I sometimes marveled at the number of hours he would spend on, de on the details. Well, there's a lot of things about J.R. people don't know, and, and people would just, just uh, be amazed at. You know, he had a, an old classic Mustang convertible in his garage at yeah. home, and didn't drive it, you know, very often. He would take it to a car show every now and then, but he just, uh, he was just an interesting, complicated now person. Now that, is a, by the way, is a Mustang convertible with red interior, and J.R. wore a white Stetson <laughs> hat, and he cut quite a quite a figure in the in that white st which matched the car. He I'm sure did. <laughs> <laughs> uh, J.R. was uh, an interesting man. Uh, I fly, for example, and I've flown all my life. Uh, I think most people know that, but J.R. was a pilot too. Very few people know that. J.R. Uh, actually owned an airplane at one time. Learned to fly. And, and so did his wife. So and, did his wife, Linda. And so did his wife, Linda. And they decided they just didn't have enough time to continue flying, and they eventually sold the airplane. But, I mean, it was something they, they tried, and that was pretty much J.R. He would try anything. You know, as a, as a teenager, he was a ham. He's a ham radio operator. And not just a ham radio operator, he learned how to build electronics. And later on, when he went to Tennessee Temple Bible College, he worked his way through college as a TV repairman. Well, guess what? Later on, he set up a TV studio for Prophecy in the News, and all of his TV repair experience came into play, enabling him to set up a TV studio without the use of an engineer. He became the engineer. So there's another side of J.R. Church. Well, I'll tell you what you want to do. You want to go to our website, prophecyinthenews.com. There's actually a 32-page autobiography that J.R. wrote about himself going back, what, seven, eight years? Yeah. But he documented in detail this whole life. And, and I actually sat and downloaded it one night in a PDF file and started to read it. And it's just Maybe it's more interesting reading about other people than it is about yourself and your own life. But literally tracing J.R.'s steps through the pastorate, through Bible college, through how he met his wife, how he started the ministry, all these little details. Uh, you'll even get to see his collection of uh, superhero rings. Oh, yes. You know, in, in one of the magazines. So the autobiography is wonderful. The other big thing, uh, every day Gary does a daily news update. Now, some of you may not know that. You have to go to the Internet to actually see it. But if you go to prophecyinthenews.com, you can actually get, uh, see Gary delivering a daily update on Bible prophecy. It's fresh, it's current, uh, and some of the things he covers on there are just absolutely wonderful. And the magazine gets delayed a little bit because of the printing process, mm -hmm. but the update is there every single day. Well, and it was J.R. Church that started doing the updates before he got really ill, and uh, I had to take over for it. And Bob, it's been fun putting together this latest uh, magazine. It has been a lot of fun. Uh, we had a comment from a viewer, um, Jim Bramlett, friend of our ministry, who called, uh, called J.R.'s passing uh, the end of the church age. 
And I found that kind of ironic. It takes me back to the comment by the old pastor uh, who'd lost his wife. And someone came up to him and said, I'm sorry you lost your wife. And he looked at the man and he said, I didn't lose my wife. I know exactly where she is. Uh, and we know exactly where JR Church is today, don't we? Amen. We certainly do. Thanks, Bob, for that. And if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, pray to receive him right now. And he, he loves you and he'll take you unto himself. And as JR Church always said, for Prophecy in the News, Gary Stearman, keep looking up. Prophecy in the News is a viewer supported ministry sponsored by our many friends across America and in your area. For your gift of $10, you can receive a special edition of our current program on an audio CD. Or for a gift of $20, we'll send you our programs on DVD videos. For either order, call the 800 number on your screen right now. 